Hello and welcome to the Inspire Life Podcast. Michael here and I am so excited to bring you this interview that I did with Dr. Vidya. Now, Dr. Vidya is a general practitioner, primary care provider, family physician by day, uh, and also, I guess, by day, she is also a mindset coach. She's written a book. She has her own Dr. Vidya Institute where she teaches, you know, seven, eight figure professionals and really high top level performers how to utilize their mindset as a tool for them to continue to grow, to adapt, and to ultimately, you know, live as their true and vitalistic self. Dr. Vidya makes a lot of just really great analogies, metaphors, and, and things for us in this episode. There's a lot to take away from this. Uh, I think one of the biggest things actually that she touched on that you'll hear is that, you know, we really, at the end of the day, can only control very few things. You know, one thing being breath, as if you've worked with Dr. Mel and myself, you know that breath is what we focus on controlling, but also our mindset. You know, how are we reacting to the things that come about? How are we being proactive so that our mindset stays in a space of abundance, right? So Dr. Vijay gives us a lot of tips and tricks on how to stay in that vitalistic space. Now, I do wanna preface this by saying this was recorded in November 2020 and it's just coming out March 2021. So we mentioned the holidays a little bit. We don't go in depth about it, but the knowledge and what we share is nonetheless still relevant. So lastly, uh, before we get into it and before we hear a word from our sponsor, just want to give everyone a heads up. We are doing an Inspire Life birthday this year. Last year we had to take our birthday party off, but we're doing it again this year. So if you're a practice member or if you're not a practice member, we're going to have a full week of fun and celebrating all that is Inspire Life. So like I said, before we jump into the episode, I uh, just want to get that out of the way. And also let's hear a quick word from one of our sponsors and then we can hear from Dr. Vidya. This episode of the Inspire Life podcast is sponsored and brought to you by Inspire Life Chiropractic Center. We help women, men, and families overcome trauma and chronic health challenges and in turn, reclaim their power in their everyday lives. Our unique approach to care is unlike anything you've probably experienced when it comes to true healthcare. Our gentle nerve system first approach is gentle, powerful, and extremely effective in helping people function and feel better from the inside out without the use of drugs and surgery. So if you're curious how we can help you, your friends, and your family, let us know. Reach out because we're here to help you. You can give us a call directly at the office at 651-756-1218. Email us at connect at inspirelifechirocenter.com and visit our website at inspirelifechirocenter.com. And without further ado, let's hop into the episode. Welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. My name is Michael. I am your producer and co-host. And today I'm really excited to be interviewing Dr. Vidya. Uh, And we're going to be talking about staying positive amidst all that 2020 has brought and with where we're at going into the holidays. However, before we get into that, uh, Dr. Vidya, if you just want to maybe give an introduction of yourself, who you are and what it is that you do. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that for that intro so far, and great to be here. So, thank you for sharing your platform with me. So, um, yeah, as um, as you briefly mentioned, I'm uh, Dr. Vidya. We'll leave the long shlunken surname for another day. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Basically, the whole alphabet. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm a GP, which is general practice or family physician. I think you might call it there. Um, and I have a background in mental health. And I'm also a high performance mindset coach or law of attraction coach or spiritual coach, whatever you want to, whatever you call it. But uh, essentially, I like to see it as mental empowerment coach, you know, because it, it, um, it, it's more relatable for, for everyone. Um, so that's essentially what I do. I'm also a mum to two very cheeky little monkeys. <laughs> uh, so two to three, um, another cheeky monkey, but that's, that's my husband. Nice. <laughs> love it. Got love having the characters in there. Um, so yeah, talking about, you mentioned their, you know, mental empowerment coach. And I really wanted to interview today to talk about what, you know, 2020 has been with uh, the coronavirus pandemic going on. And we know that, I mean, if we look at Generation Z in particular, a lot of the rates of Mental health, people who are dealing with mental health uh, complexities and illnesses, it's, it's skyrocketing and uh, moving into the holidays and, and you know, wintertime in general. We know that 
uh, less sunlight can mean a lot of different things coming up for people. So how do we find ways to stay positive, to keep our vision in check, to keep our goals in check, and to ultimately continue to, you know, show up for ourselves and our communities? Uh, what, I guess, what insights do you have into being successful with that, with where we're currently at? Well, awesome. Like, thank you for asking that because first of all, I think it's, it's good because it's people are beginning to see that actually you do have a choice, you know, which I know is what your podcast is all about, right? Like that birthright is that it's not about like what's done to you and not about being reactive. And look, I say that with a caveat of whoever's listening, you know, like I know that sometimes many of us have been through traumas or very challenging times or going through that so it's not um i do completely take that on board but what i found in you know i used to work on you know locked uh wards in uh, i'm not really called asylums now but essentially locked mental health wards um in you know itu and in working with women in domestic violence and men and the biggest thing was that whatever the situation has been, you know, you could be a victim in, from, in war crime, right? So um, there's so much that can, that can happen, right? But you ultimately have to, I guess at some point, make a decision of how much am I gonna let this thing that's happened or this, this story, sometimes story sort of underrates what's happened, but you, you get what I'm trying to say here. Like, do I want this to like define me? You know, like I'm more than that, right? And and I know that that might have happened to me, but I have a choice. And I think when people and listening to you know to, to your phenomenal podcast, by the way, so it, it starts to evoke this idea of actually, you have first of all all the love that you need inside of you. You have actually all the resources. I mean, yes, there's like better strategies and blueprints and all this sort of stuff. That's that's like the fine tuning. But um, you have actually, the power first of all is within you. That's the biggest thing, right? So people sometimes look for that in like a partner or they may look for that in in another person. So I know it was freezing a bit, but essentially I was just saying that essentially when you start to hand your power over to somebody else, that's when things can start to get, can start to get tricky, you know? That's when things can start to get tricky. When you think that you don't have the power within you, it's dependent on the status of my relationship on this other person. So you're handing your power over to them. Or maybe it's a disease process or like a diagnostic label, which is useful in some ways, but also not if you start to embody that, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially what I'm trying to say is you can decide the definition for yourself, right? Because as long as you are saying no but this has happened and this has happened and it's completely justified right but you keep telling that story number one you are literally wiring your mind and programming it into i am a victim i'll always be a victim i have absolutely no power um so you know 2020 covid um being a toxic relationship anything it's all like happening to me and i have no control so what's going to happen is through the universal law of attraction right? You will also attract things on that same frequency of um, victimization and these low vibrational energies, which yes, are totally justified. I'm not saying, yeah, but you know, I've been through this. I'm not saying that, but, but at some point you only, you have, can have the power, right? To sort of be like, you know what? I've decided, and it is actually this simple. I have made a decision that from now on, I've got a new story. I want a new story and I get to decide what that is, right? Um, I get to decide what it is. Now, of course, with making that new decision, you're rewiring your subconscious mind. So you have to do it through repetition, visualization of how it, the, the best way you can imagine that relationship, your health, your future, everything in the present tense. It's not some like, you know, this whole like, where do you want to be in 10 years time? It's like, oh my God, <laughs> it's so far away, you know? You want it like in the next six months to, to a year, maybe two years, not like so far away. So imagine that's happening right now. And yes, initially it's a little bit act as if, act as if it is like that. When you keep doing it, it becomes a habit. You are actually manifesting it. I know that's like a law of attraction word, but that's actually what's happening because your subconscious mind 
does not know the difference between reality and imagination. It doesn't know. So you're literally like my little toddlers. You're literally telling them, this is what the world is like. They don't know, right? It's whatever I tell them. It's whatever media I put on. So you can actually choose the world you live in. Um, you mentioned also about, of course, you know, the younger generations. Um, now look, the environment we also live in now, this is evolution, right? So we're talking, so I love social media because for me, this is social media, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I'm, I'm getting my message across, you're getting your message across, we're two, you know, soul brothers and sisters connecting, you know, with a similar soul mission. So I'm like, wow, this is awesome, right? It's, it's brilliant. Of course, there's a, there's a dark side to anything. This is yin and yang, right? This is the energies of the world. So you can choose to look at the really dark, side like literally what are the hashtags you're following right and what are what are you liking right because it's an algorithm it's not some big bad nasty wolf algorithm this is the way the world works right so if you're constantly liking things which are about let's say covid how awful 2020 is and oh, i can't wait for it to be over well it's like the algorithm algorithm sorry is like law of attraction it's just gonna send you more of that stuff because like well you know like he likes it or she likes it Right, so you have to, on purpose, look at what am I looking at and say you're not interested to what you know is not good for you, right? Like, I don't wanna be um, looking at this, this article about this. It's not, it's not serving me. Like, I know this is happening. I don't need to know the specific numbers unless you're an epidemiologist. You don't need to know the specific numbers on the hour, every hour, all right? You really don't. Switch off news notifications. You know, there's all of these things you have control over. And when you're feeling a bit vulnerable, you're tired, you're just feeling like it's a little bit of a challenging day, it makes a difference what comes up in your feed. I mean, I don't even look at my feed because that means I sometimes don't have control. I just, I use it for, for my, my mission, uh, like yourself, to get stuff out there and to respond to, to people who are, who are asking questions. I don't really kind of use it otherwise because I know things might come up that I don't really want to ruin my vibration when I want to concentrate on doing more of this stuff so um i hope that that answered it i know it's a big a big answer but there's just so much to say about it it's essentially yeah. everything. well just to kind of summarize some of the you made a lot of really important points i had to take some notes um one of the big things that you said at the beginning there was understanding proactivity versus reactivity and if we can put ourselves in a proactive mindset where we are taking responsibility not only for things that are occurring in our lives, but also for how we react to them and how we perceive them. That's going to help us, as you say, stay in a higher frequency, help us be in a state where, okay, you know, I can navigate the waves that are coming this year and I can still prosper and find, you know, strength throughout all of this. So I thought that was a really important point. Also, uh, when you're talking about, you didn't use the word vision, but when we're thinking about that ideal state or where we want to be, uh, there's a mantra that one of my clients actually shared with me a couple months ago that I've been living by, which is assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, yes. right? Put yourself, put yourself in that mindset. Cause like you said, consciously or subconscious or subconsciously our, our body or our mind doesn't necessarily know the difference. So if we can really just put ourselves in that energetic space of, Oh yeah, like this is, I am where I want to be. And you know, we're, we're progressing that way. Having the mindset's going to help us get there in a more, maybe not quicker, but I guess in a way that's going to really help us sustain those results. And then lastly, the, the thing that you mentioned about when it comes to social media, right? Because I mentioned Gen Z and, you know, choosing what to follow and being able to have, you have the power to, to choose what's going to come up on your feed, right? So if you are, for example, if you log on to Instagram and all you see is like ex-partners or maybe friends of the past who you had a falling out with, well, that could bring about some feelings that maybe won't feel so great. And on the flip side, if all you're seeing is like, you know, people who you aspire to be, maybe it's like some guy in the gym who's lifting a bunch of weight or whatever it may be, and you don't aren't necessarily in that spot and it's going to bring up feelings of envy, you have the choice to click unfollow. You have the choice to click unsubscribe. And like you said too, looking at social media maybe more as an avenue to share messages rather than going in there to just simply consume is another way to be proactive with that. So I just wanted to summarize some of those points that you made because they all, they're all interconnected, right? I mean, the energetic space that we're in 
is going to show up in, you know, what we accomplish and what we see, whether it's on social media or even just, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives uh, and really being able to tap into our brains and our mindset to make sure that we're keeping ourselves in a high frequency space. So, um, definitely. And I think, I think um, what I normally do is I don't look at feeds to be honest, I will, but there will be certain people that I know, like for me, you know, I've been really blessed to have been under the chief coach of Bob Proctor. So I'm like also a Bob Proctor coach, but under him or maybe the Oprah or Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi or I'm going to be up their Instagram accounts, but you know, like their teachings and, I, or ne and Neville Goddard, which I think is what you were coaching beforehand. And I'll go into that, you know, I'll be like, oh, I think I'm, feeling, I'm needing a bit of like Neville Goddard today or even typing a hashtag of like, you know, um, positive vibration and doing from that right because that's literally like it's like you're tuning in like hello i'd like to tune into this frequency now please whereas your feed is um just it's just even your email your text messages your whatsapp and also you don't do it but maintain that that power and sometimes you know what if you are feeling a little bit anxious about something then maybe don't do that stuff because something can come up that's going to trigger it doesn't mean you ignore it um, but you just do it in a, in a, in a time when your vibration is much, much higher and you're realizing your, your power, you know, a lot more, because the thing is everything, like, let's just, let's say this way when, you know, we're, we're talking right now and that this will be aired, like not right now, it will be, you know, in a couple of hours or a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Right. So everything that we see is actually a reflection of our past in some shape or form. Right. So even if it's an email chasing you about, I don't know, some payment or some issue or an appointment or something, technically it's from the past, right? Technically it's talking about something that happened. Um, and actually what you're working on right now is much better focus, you know, much better way to focus your energy than like, oh, I'm so worried about this and I'm so worried about that. And, you know, and like, for example, one of my, uh, one of my clients was like, oh, I'm, you know, they're, they're, um, income got down a bit because um, um, her, her uh, partner is also um, pregnant um, and so they're really like stressing about finances and I think they missed like a month or two of like some some just some payments right and you know she's working on like a phenomenal new like service which is great but when you get those emails and like you know you miss this payment that and also they constantly call you because it's just like an automatic thing to them it's just a, to them it's just a business it's a system it's like an automatic thing it's not personal like I'm gonna I'm gonna like really annoy you today um but when you when you hand your power over to that of course it gets you feeling anxious and like oh my gosh oh my god like like as if the ground's gonna open up and swallow you and, and that's it but actually I was like well you're actually working on the solution right like you should actually just focus on your launch maybe you can have a conversation if it's not a robot <laughs> and say, Hey, look, you know, yes, I know it's a bit delayed, not ignoring you can, you know, I'm going to need like a, a month or so, you, you know, you can normally have a conversation like that. And if you actually focused your energy on that, this is watering the, the, the roses in your, in your garden of life. If you like, and when you talked about the vision, this is watering those, the vision is like planting seeds of prosperity and you're, you're watering that right now, or you can choose to water the weeds, and it becomes like the little shop of horrors, right? <laughs> you know? So you, in that way, you have a choice. And literally, that's mindfulness, right? You can't, you literally have to be like, okay, I'm aware of the anxiety right now, but I have a choice, right? I'm choosing right now. I know that's happening, but I'm choosing right now to literally intentionally focus on this. You know, be responsible, have a conversation, something's going on, can have a grace period of like a month or six weeks or whatever. You know, do that, be responsible, and then, you know, put your phone on airplane mode, right? <laughs> Download stuff, just get on with what you're doing, set yourself some deadlines, and then, like you said, your future self will thank you, right? Like, show up for yourself and get it, get it done. That's the important thing, and that's when you have to assume it's done. You have to evidence the miracle, like, wow, what an amazing day I've had because I focused on this, you know, I focus on, I, I harness my inner power. So it's also, and Neville Goddard also talks about evidencing the miracle. So you're intentionally looking for, look, see, it's happening, even in small little ways. Because what do we normally do? We do the opposite, right? Like, oh, my phone's not working, it died. See, see, like, it's just not happening. And it's almost like something really small. Imagine if we did it the other way around, all those what ifs, 
what if the what if this did work out what if this did happen what if you know so let's do that and yes you have to initially kind of act as if um that's the initial phase and it's like riding a bike and then it's like oh you just do it but it's that little bit of practice um and then that you'll and then you'll be fine so that's yeah. the that's the best thing i would i would say about that that's so powerful just remembering too I, I love the metaphor about the garden right remember to stay in the moment and be mindful of what is the task at hand and what needs to be tended to and also like with you what you said right i mean you can water the roses but if you're also watering the weeds you're going to wind up with maybe some things that aren't so ideal so really being able to to tap into our mindset and focus in the moment what is the thing that's going to serve me best and keep progressing me towards that beautiful garden that i want um Awesome. Well, I, I thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I did want to ask, uh, I asked this question to every guest because I'm sure maybe we'll have to do another, another uh, episode because you have so much wisdom to share. But for today's episode, what is the number one takeaway uh, you would like for our, our audience to get out of this episode? You have the power within you if you choose to, right? Or you can, you can hand it over to someone else keep telling that story that sounds a bit harsh but um you really honestly can make a decision right now i've made a decision that i'm going to tell myself a new story and um to to do that you need to do a certain things i call it the heart system so you need to heal which is de-weeding right uh, you need to empower yourself right through the things we talked about you need to have an awakening so be awake have a beginner's mind don't be like, oh, law of attraction, you know, what is this? Like, be open, learn, learn about everything. Then you want to rise and thrive, right? Forget this whole survival, you know, rubbish. We want to thrive, right? It's our time to shine and rise and thrive. And again, that is your choice. If you, if you want it and do it from a space of love and light, right? But to do that, you need that resilience. So this is the way to do it. You know, the de-weeding, watering the roses, and just, just keep doing it over and over and over again. You have all the power you need and all the love that you need within yourself. You don't need anyone else to complete you. Everything else is a bonus, is a sweetness of life, but you have it all within you. Thank you for sharing that message. I think, especially right now, it's one that's really important for us to keep hearing. And like you said, there is power in the choice too. So uh, Dr. Vidya, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Like I said, we'll connect again. Uh, there's a lot, you have a ton more wisdom that we just didn't even scratch the sur surface. So uh, exciting to connect further. But uh, for all of our listeners of the Inspire Life podcast, until next time, my friends, keep inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Inspire Life podcast today. Make sure you check out the show notes and check out the link to check out Dr. Vidya and all that she does. I promise you will not be disappointed and you will find immense value in everything that she offers. Also, if you're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're at, please like and subscribe to the show. It helps us get our message out to more people who can get value and really optimize their lives from the Inspire Life podcast. Also, if you're on iTunes, uh, please leave a review. That really helps us as well. And then lastly, jump on over to Facebook and join the Inspired Living community. That's where Dr. Mel and I go live multiple times a week. We're doing giveaways. We are really giving more than just content, but true hope to the people who we serve. Uh, and we hope to see you there. And of course, as always, until next time, my friends, keep inspiring. Thank you.